All right. What is the greatest common factor of 48 and 72? Well, we're going to take 48, and we're going to break this one up. So 48 would go to 6 and 8, which goes to 2 and 3. 8 goes to 2 and 4, which goes to 2 and 2. 72 breaks up to be um, 9 and 8. So 3 and 3, 2 and 4, which goes to 2 and 2. So when we're doing greatest common factor, greatest common factor, we're looking for what factors do they have in common. So they have a set of 2s. So we would write a 2 down. Second set of 2s. So times by 2. We're going to multiply all these groups. Third set of 2s. So times by a 2. And then we have a set of 3s. So times by 3. This extra 3 doesn't do anything for us, neither does this extra 2. Mrs. Dan, if you're in the building, would you please come to um, room 112? Sorry for the interruption. So we have 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2 again, which is 8, times 3, which is 24. And that's our greatest common factor. So when we do prime factorization, we can get this. The other way, when they're smaller numbers, we can just list out the factors, and then we circle what's in common. Now, building on that, now we're going to switch to least common multiple, which are kind of related here. So this one's going to be the smallest number that is a multiple of both. So what numbers can divide into it? Think of it that way. So two methods. So one way we're going to go through just like we did uh, with factors, we're going to list out the multiples. So we can start with the smallest and work our way up. And then once we find one that match, we circle it and that's the least common multiple. The other way is again to do the prime factorization, but we're going to pair up numbers. So if they all have it, we'll circle it and write it down once. If only two have it, we'd circle it and write it down once. And then if none of them have it, we'll circle it and write it down once. So we'll, we'll do an example of those so that, that makes more sense. So if we start here with 12 and 6, so if we do the list out method for 6 and for 12, so always start with the first multiple. Well, 6 and 12. Anything in common? In this case, no. So then go to your next, to your smaller number and find its next multiple. So the next multiple from 6 would be 12. That matches. So that's our least common multiple. If we would keep going, let's say um, if we did 8 and uh, 12. So first ones, we would be 8 and 12. So then we go to the next one with here, so 16. Well, if that doesn't match, so then we find another one with the big one, 24. So we find the next multiple of 8. So 8, 16, 24. Now we've got it, so now we stop. So always start with your bigger, or your first multiple, and then you're looking at your bigger number. So we're going to make multiples of this one until we either match or we get bigger. So in this case, the next multiple is bigger, so then we stop and we find the next multiple for the bottom one. Okay, so now that's still the match. So you go back to the small one, find its next multiple until it either matches or it's bigger. And then you just keep doing that process until you found where it matched. So 17 and 19. Well, 17 doesn't break down anything. It's prime. 19 is also prime. So when you're dealing with two numbers that have absolutely nothing in common, all you have to do is multiply them and you're going to get the solution. So if we took 17 times our 19, we're going to get 323, and that would be its least common multiple. So if we look at this one here, again, 3 is prime. 19, also prime. But 16 here, we could break down to 4 and 4, and 2 and 2. Now, the only reason why we break this down is we still need to look, because maybe 3 or 19 would be a multiple of this other one, and then we would have something in common. However, when it breaks down, all we get are 2s. Doesn't match up with the 3 or 19. So again, we would multiply these. 
and you would end up with 912. Okay. So even though these are prime, you still need to check if there's a composite number and see if any of these factors are one of these other prime numbers. So then we have 16, 8, and 48. So 8, 16, 48. Now you can do the multiples here. And Mr. Bond, if you're still in the building, would you come to room 112? Anybody else who wants to come to room 112, you just come on down. Good time's happening in room 112 after school today. Again, apologize for the interruption. So... We could do the list method and we could find this pretty easy, but I want to show the prime factorization way and show how this all comes together. So eight would go to two and four, which goes to two and two. 16, we could break down to four and four, which again would be two and two, two and two. 48 would go to six and eight, which go to two and three, and two and four, which goes to two and two. So, you're going to start off similar to greatest common factor. You're going to look for what do they all have in common. Well, we have a 2, we have a 2, and we have a 2. So we start with a 2. We have a second set of 2s. We have a third set of 2s. Okay. So now that covers everything that they all have in common. And eight even is completely done. There's no factors left. So now we're just going to look at these two. So after you look at what do they all have, then you start looking at, okay, what other groups do I have in common here? So looking at these here, we would have another set of twos that's in common between these two. So now 16, again, it's completely done. So now we're down to just 48. So from here, once there is nothing else in common, you're going to write down what's different. So this one has a 3, so we take it times 3. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 3 is 48. Now, this was an extra one that I did in class. That I'm just going to do on the back side here. So this one's not in the notes, but an extra one I want to do just to show something. So if we did 12, 18, and 100. So 12 would break down to 3 and 4, which go to 2 and 2. 18 could go to 3 and 6, which go to 2 and 3. 100 would go to 10 and 10, which both goes to 2 and 5. Now we're completely factored out. So that's step number one is going to be what do they all have in common? So if we look at this, we have a two here, we have a two here, we have a two here. So we could put a two down. And then is there anything else? Nope, that looks like it's it. So from there we're going to look at, okay, what do two of them have in common? Well, this one has a three. This one here has a three. So, we can multiply by 3. This one here has a 2. This one here has a 2. So we can multiply by 2. Again, 12. We've used them all, so we're going to cross that out. It's, there's no more to look at there. So is there anything else in common between these two? Well, this one has a 5 and a 5. This one has a 3. So no, there's nothing more in common, so now we write what's different. So 3 was something that was different that this one had, but none of the other numbers had. So we're going to write that one down. This one's got a 5, and this one's got a 5. That again, these other two numbers didn't have. So we'll write those down. So now when we multiply this, if we get these all multiplied together, we should get 900. And that would be its LCM, the least common multiple there. So that's how you do it with the prime factorization. The other way is just list them out. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. All right, that's the lesson.